G'day, it's Prezzo. <laughs> I'm here in the shop and starting a new project today and see if you can guess what all these parts are going to be. Okay, put your hand up if you said a sand muller. Well, yep, you're right. And this is a project I've been wanting to do for some time as I started doing some metal casting in my shop about, I don't know, four or five years ago. And to be honest, uh, I got sick of mixing the sand with my poor little fingers. Uh, it's hard on your back, it's hard on your neck, shoulders, and you've got to get it on your hands and knees and dig your hands into a great big bin full of uh, compacted and dry sand and try and break it up and make it into a sort of a fine and friable green sand. And I had a look at a post by Lucky Gen 1001 where he made his own sand muller and it looked like something I could do here in my shop. Now, the thing is that a lot of these parts are brand new. So nearly everything you see on the bench here is new that I purchased for this job, except for these. And I got these secondhand down at the uh, secondhand shop or the recycling center. And these are two and a half kilo cast iron weights. And these are going to be used to crush the sand, uh, like a, uh, make a roller. And there's four of those. Now, <clears throat> this is a brand new motor. It's a, I think a 300 watt motor. And you might say, well, gee, there's enough second-hand motors lying around. You should be able to get one and use that. But the thing is that this sand muller has to be sort of semi-weatherproof. I'm going to have to keep this thing outside under an awning. Uh, it's still going to be sort of subjected to uh, spray and, um, you know, sort of misty rain and that sort of thing uh, because I can't completely cover it. So I wanted to have a totally enclosed fan cool motor uh, to stand up electrically uh, even though it's sort of going to be in a sort of a hostile environment. Now this gearbox, I put one of these in a, a bandsaw, there it is there, that was my last project. And this one, I purchased this early on and I purchased the wrong ratio basically, I, this is a 60 to 1. But coupled with this motor, it gives exactly the right RPM for a sand muller, around about the 22 to 30 RPM range. Uh, the pulley, uh, that's going to go onto the top of the gearbox like that. This flexible coupling is going to join the motor and the gearbox together. That's right, fall over. This is a little uh, timer. I bought this really cheap on eBay, but it's the type of timer that was used on microwave ovens, you know, the, the old-fashioned ones, <laughs> before they were full of electronics and computers. So this one you just rotate it and it counts down and it's got a little bell on the back to go off when it's done. This is a stub axle from a, a trailer with its associated bearings. That's going to form the main spindle for the, the mixing drum in the sand muller. So that's it. That's what we're going to do. So uh, sit back and enjoy. Watch me fumble around try and make something useful out of this stuff. Total investment here I'm thinking is around about, I don't know, $200 maybe all of this stuff so far and given that it's just about impossible to buy a brand new sand muller uh, or anything like a second hand one for this sort of hobby shop I figured that this was worth a go and uh, if you're looking at this stuff and saying well you know do you need to buy it brand new no you don't you could buy it or use a second hand motor out of a washing machine I think that's what Lucky Gen did you don't need this you know piece of um, flexible rubber with a couple of hose clamps would do. Don't need that at all. You could just switch the machine on and off and time it with your watch. This you could probably get out of a, a scrapped car, like a front uh, axle bearing on a, on a car. Pulley, you can make that out of plywood and just machine it on the metal lathe or the wood lathe. Gearbox is probably the only thing that you might struggle with and this one costs around about $125, $130. You can buy second-hand uh, versions of this on eBay. I just couldn't find one that was compact enough for what I wanted to do, so I bought this one. So I'm not rich, but I figured that if I'm going to do this, I want it to last. If I was keeping it indoors, yes, I could probably get away with using sort of less durable stuff. Anyway, let's get busy. We're going to try and make uh, all these parts. I'll show you bits and pieces as we go along, and then we'll see if it does the business. Okay, these elements here are going to form the main bearing assembly which supports the sand muller drum. Now this is just a standard stub axle for a trailer. 
you can buy these down at the auto accessory shop. If you've got a scrap one, by all means use it. It doesn't need to be in tip-top condition because it's rotating at a very low RPM. And uh, although there are some dynamic loads on this, it's nothing like you'd find with a heavily loaded trailer. Uh, this part here is going to form the bearing housing and the attachment plate for the bearing housing to the bottom of the sand muller drum. It's upside down at the moment, you've got to imagine this inverted and sitting on top of this. Now you could just uh, use a standard uh, trailer hub and with a bit of modification that would work fine. I thought I had one, went through the scrap box, couldn't find it and I decided to just make it out of this material that I had lying around. So this is actually three pieces and it's been rough turn at the moment. It's going to be, uh, well these two parts are going to be welded together and then all of the fits are going to be turned for the bearing uh, cups and they'll be pressed in and then we can weld that to this part here to make a finished assembly. So that's where we're going next. I won't show all of that on camera because it's just a lot of metal turning. We'll come back when I've got this as a rotating unit and then we'll go forward to the next step. Oh, and I should mention, I don't know what this steel is. It was just part of a, uh, like a shipment of scrap that I got from a local metal supplier. And I turned that with a carbide insert and I couldn't believe the finish on it. It's, it's really, really nice. A lot of the steel that I use around here is just cold rolled, rubbish quality, I think it's called cold bending steel. Uh, it turns terribly. It's stringy and horrible. You never get a good surface finish on it. But this stuff came out beautiful. So it sort of restored my faith in my lathe and my carbide inserts. Because up until now, I've sort of assumed there was something wrong with my lathe and that's why I was getting such a bad finish. But this is good. This bore here is to accept the, the lower bearing, the larger bearing, and it's rubber seal. And I guess we need a little bit of clearance between the seal and the face of the bearing. So just measuring that, we've got uh, say 18.8 millimeters. So we'll shoot for 19, and that'll give us just that little bit of clearance. So this is about 1.9 millimeters undersized in diameter and we're aiming for a sort of a light press fit for that to go in there. Well, as it turned out, my insert of my bigger boring bar was cactus, so I swapped out for a smaller one. I didn't have any replacements. Good enough for me. I think that'll press in there okay. And the seal should be the same size. Yep, so that's all good. So I'm just going to get all tidied up inside there, do a few chamfers, so we can turn it around, do the other end. loose but <laughs> I put a bit of clearance in the top half of this bore so that that bearing cup only gets tight as it seats at the bottom. So that's all good and all we need to do now is just sort of give this a clean up here. Don't look at my weld but we're going to put a shoulder on here so that big large disc 
can be pushed on and then welded. Well, that should be our hub. It should be good to take the two bearing cups low. <laughs> I'm hoping it's still okay when it cools down. It's a bit warm at the moment. I think that'll be okay. The other one will go in there and we're going to weld that disc on to finish. Okay, here's an update on the spindle bearing assembly. Uh, I've got this bore here sized to fit the rest of that assembly here, uh, which will take the two bearings. And this is going to bolt directly to the bottom of the sand muller drum and this will be welded around here to finish up. And I was all ready to do that and then I suddenly realized that uh, I wanted to be able to screw another one of these five inch pulleys to the bottom of this flange plate here. And my reasoning was that I wanted to be able to remove that pulley and change the ratio if I need to. I'm actually going to make that pulley out of plywood and with a row of six holes to bolt it to the steel plate here, it allows me to play around with the ratios and change that if necessary. So that's the plan. So uh, I had to put it back in the chuck and I had to pick up that existing pattern of six holes with this countersink bit here. I've got an indexing attachment on the headstock of my lathe so I can move that drill bit in and drill another row of six holes to line up with the existing six. So I'm about to do that now and then we can weld this whole assembly together, get the bearings fitted and give it a spin, see how it goes. Okay, well there are my ring of six holes uh, indexed around there and they line up with the original six, not that they had to. And that way when this uh, assembly goes together and it's all welded, I can still fit my pulley over this larger boss here. And I've still got enough room to bolt through the pulley without interfering with uh, the V-groove. And I'm shooting for a finished RPM of 22. So the pulley that I'm putting on here is going to be slightly bigger than the dry pulley. I've calculated that out so it's going to give me that correct ratio. Okay, well I've skipped ahead a few steps here. What I've done is I've mounted a 25mm thick plywood blank to this steel disc which is going to become part of the, the bearing housing. And I've held it on with uh, three M8 Torx screws, eventually there'll be six. And I've machined the outer diameter here to be the correct diameter to give me that RPM of 22. And uh, what I need to do now is cut the A-section pulley or the V for the A-section pulley into that. And I've done a few calculations. I've got the flat at the bottom of the V and I've just taken the depth of this pulley here and I've replicated that in the plywood. And what I need to do now is cut the 20 degree, uh, or sorry, the 40 degree included angle for the V. And then I'll get the sanded up, bore a big hole in that so that it will clear that section of the bearing housing. And the other thing I realize now is that the holes which attach the drum to the steel disc are now partially uh, blocked by this pulley. And that means I'm going to put a spacer in between the pulley and that disc, but that's okay, that'll work. And then I can 
go ahead and do a trial assembly. Now you, you might say, well, why did you use plywood? You should use aluminium. And yes, she's correct. Uh, and I, eventually I'll probably cast a replica of this in aluminium. But thing is, you need a sand muller. <laughs> at least I want a sand muller before I do any more casting. This will at least give me a, an idea of whether this whole thing is going to work without you know, wasting a lot of energy getting a, a cast fully done. So I'll get this, um, get the V put in that now, and uh, then we can get the whole board. See what happens after that. It's looking promising though. Just started on that process of cutting that 40 degree included angle uh, in the, the rim. And the only way I could see of doing it was to use a 55 degree insert. This is an old insert, so it doesn't matter if it's cutting wood. And to get 40 degrees from a 55 degree insert, I've got to turn the compound back seven and a half degrees. And then I can just use it like a form tool and just plunge cut straight in. And I'll just have to work both sides, either side of center. So we'll just see how this works. That's pretty much taken care of the, the back side and it's going to repeat that process on the, the side closest to the tailstock. So I'll swing that uh, insert around the other way and we'll try that. Okay, so same again. Okay, so here's our belt seems to be correct and there's our other pulley and there you go it drives all right that's cool what I'll do here is just trim a little bit more off that uh, outer diameter there just give me more clearance for the bolts and the nuts but that is looking promising well, as you can see, I've made some progress, and that's always a good sign with a project like this. And I guess one of the good things is that if this whole power unit had blown up on the bench, well, I'd just bin it and destroy the video evidence, and you'd never know. But anyway, we're, we're looking good. So what I've done is I've made up a 6mm steel bracket, uh, which the motor is bolted to, and an 8mm vertical bracket that the gearbox is going to mount to. And connecting the two uh, is one of these little um, flexible couplings. And I've never used these before, but uh, they seem to do the job, so that's all good. Uh, unfortunately, the one that I bought, uh, the bore diameter was not the same as the motor shaft diameter. It was just uh, oversight on my part. So what I've done is I've made an aluminium coupling. Let me show you. So this coupling here, the outer diameter, is the same as the bore diameter for the, the flexible coupling. And it's been keyed to the shaft of the motor and it's held in place with a, a washer on the end and a, an M6 uh, socket head cap screw. That pulls that aluminium sleeve onto the shaft of the motor and locks it all in place. So the flexible coupling now fits on like that. I can lock that to the aluminium extension with the socket head screw here. At the other end of that flexible coupling, I've got a steel extension and a key and a keyway, and that's all sized to match the input for the gearbox. Now, there's no lock for that. It just basically engages in that uh, input, and when everything's bolted up tight against this bracket, it all seems to work. Well, welcome back, comrades. So I've spent the last two days getting this built to this point. I thought I'd share this with you now because this is essentially the drive unit and all the rest of the sand model is going to be built around a single piece of 50 by 50 square tubing and it comprises the motor plate, the gearbox mount, the transfer, the belt transfer to the, the main spindle and on top of the main spindle we're going to have the mixing drum. So I thought I'd show you what this looks like and I'll put it together and we'll see it running. So this motor plate is just a, uh, like a fabrication. I'll finish this welding off later. This was just uh, to get it tested and running. 
and motor bolts on by these four slots. Uh, don't really need the slots, I don't know why I did that. I think I assumed that I would need to adjust that four and a half, but you don't really need to. There's another pair of slots here that allow you to tension up the drive belt. So loosening those two M10 nuts there allows you to slide that plate left and right and therefore put the tension on the belt. The gearbox mounting plate is fairly straightforward. The gearbox is held on by M6 screws that fit through these four holes in the front of that plate there. Underneath I welded M10 nuts for all of the uh, mountings onto this piece of tube so you don't have to fiddle around trying to get a spanner underneath there. Now, let's have a look at this bit. This unit here I purchased as a stub axle for a standard box trailer and that saves a lot of work in the, the build. This part uh, I found in my scrap box. So I was looking through trying to find some steel I could use to mount this vertically on this piece of tubing. This is actually a cast iron piece that came out of my Sieg X3 milling machine. This used to be the Z-axis nut mount. I guess you could fabricate this out of some welded steel plate and some tube and so on. Now the, the actual sub axle is held on underneath. Let's see if I can show you that. So there's a, a large steel washer and a, an M12 bolt that fits up into the sub axle. So I'll take that out of there and show you what that looks like. So I've machined the end of the stub axle, i put a thread inside that M12. Uh, this uh, spindle here uh, and the shoulder is to fit against the already existing hole in this cast iron piece here. You could, you know, it doesn't really matter what that diameter is, you can make it whatever. And the large wash underneath there just turned up from some chrome molly bar. So what that does is uh, just gives you a really rigid mounting for that spindle. Remember that all of the weight of the sand is carried by this one assembly. So it does need to be fairly robust. So that goes on there. You can just tighten it up, that one M12 nut. And that's held on to this piece of tube by two M10 bolts to go right through and that's got nut gun anywhere all right that's rigid enough now this is the part that I showed you last this has been powder coated uh, just for durability this is one of the largest pieces I've ever powder coated at home it took about half an hour to get this up to temperature in the oven before that powder would fuse now the plywood pulley has had a an offset uh, piece put in there or a spacer if you like and that's just so I can get at the nuts to tighten up the mixing bowl on top of that. This is eventually going to get replaced with something cast out of aluminium although I'm going to see how this goes it, it might actually be durable enough who knows. I've already put the, um, the cups for the bearings inside there they pressed in okay and that now just sits on top of our axle assembly. top bearing slides down into there and our nut can be used to put the preload on the bearings and there will need to be some sort of a seal up here later on just to stop grit and sand and stuff from getting inside that bearing but that all rotates really nicely um, it's durable it's robust it's easily going to take the weight of our mixing drum so that's not a problem Okay, I'm going to get the rest of the assembly done now. We'll come back and we'll have a look at this running.
Alrighty, let's plug it in. Sure, you can see there that's got tons of torque. Uh, I don't think that's going to need a lot of torque to mix sand, but I'm happy with that. Speed seems about right. I calculated that it is 22 rpm. It's certainly, you know, everything's rigid when it's assembled and welded into this frame, nothing's going anywhere. So let's switch this off and wrap this up. Okay, I'm going to leave the video here now because you've seen the, the drive unit or this one module and how that applies to our sand muller build. In the next video we're going to look at making the, the mixing drum that sits on top of this plate here. And that's the thing that held me back from doing this build for a long time because I was trying to figure out a way of getting a large disc 725 millimeters in diameter that was strong enough and durable enough to grind sand in. And ideally you would use something like stainless steel, aluminium or cast iron would be even better. But I just didn't have anything big enough in diameter and thick enough to do the job. And I you know, resented the idea of having to go out and buy something uh, like steel or stainless steel because it gets very costly. And what I've decided to use instead of this material here. Now this is called form ply, that's what we call it here in Australia. It's for uh, building up forms for concrete. It's uh, F17, it's 19 millimeters thick, it's a hardwood ply, uh, structural ply, and it has this uh, waterproof coating on the outside. And that sort of makes it ideal. It's stiff enough and thick enough, and it comes in a big enough sheet for me to use, but it's not going to withstand sand being ground into that, uh, in the sort of application we're gonna use it in. So what I'm gonna do is to skin this with three millimeter thick aluminium. And that's going to give me uh, a surface which is going to stand up to the, the grinding of the, the roller. So that's what we're going to look at in the next video. And the other thing is that you've got this large 750 diameter circle. And then you've got 10 kilograms of cast iron weights pressing down on that offset from this center here. And that's going to put a, a huge uh, bending moment on that drum. And it's going to want to tilt the whole time and although the structure is quite rigid it's probably not the best engineering solution so what i'm going to do is to put this one single wheel offset directly underneath those 10 kilogram rollers or 10 kilograms in total and that's going to balance out the load so i'm going to need to build something off the back of this weld something on that to support that one wheel and I'm hoping that that's going to relieve a lot of the load off the spindle here. So that's what we're going to look at in the next video. And I invite you to come along then and, and see how that's going. And I've just realized something. My hands are always filthy. And I've got filth and gunge underneath my fingernails. And the, the skin's all cracked and <laughs> covered in muck and grease. And I've just realized why you see so many maker videos where people are wearing nitrile gloves and it's not because they want to keep their hands clean it's because they don't want to show their filthy hands on camera but I figure hey what the hell you know I'm serious if you see my hands are disgustingly dirty so that's that's my excuse anyway anyway join me on the next video we'll uh, get a little bit further along with this build but I'm happy with it so far it's gone better than I expected and uh, I think it's going to be a success so join me then thanks for watching